Hello, welcome back. We're here for our fourth session of Natural Vision Improvement Day. And now we're going to be joined by Dr. Mark Grossman, who's based in New Paltz, New York. And not only is he a holistic eye doctor, but also uh, involving aspects of acupuncture and diet and nutrition, and just got this very integrative approach to eye care, you know, for the whole being. And we've been honored to have you participate in our conferences in the past, and also got to feature you, feature you in the documentary and got to come by your place there in New York. So uh, really happy to have you here today and to share your wisdom with us. Dr. Mark Grossman, welcome. Uh, thank you so much, Nathan. And um, <clears throat> thank you for putting on this conference. First, I want to start with gratitude. First, gratitude is towards this community of vision educators who see the world similarly to how I uh, work with patients. Um, I feel like the vision educators are families. Many of, a few of those of you in the audience uh, I've actually know personally and have worked with me and trained with me. So um, I feel <clears throat> very gratitude for the fact that this exists. Second is uh, some of my mentors, my mentors, uh, some optometrists such as Elliot Forrest, who is the uh, coined the psychobehavioral model of vision, Dr. Al Shankman, who I was a, a patient of for uh, two years, who had a philosophy of vision and yoga, and Al Sutton, who was really into the body mind. And some of those mentors are on the panels today and lecturing to do, like Ray Gottlieb and Jacob Lieberman good of friends for over 40 years, and in honor also of a good friend who passed, Roberto Kaplan, who I knew really well, and I consider him one of my mentors also. <clears throat> so when uh, Nathan said, what do you want to speak on? I said, mm, well, let's talk about vision and relationships. So let's put up the slides. And we're going to talk about vision and relationships. And then I'm going to definitely add time for questions. And I'll be on the panel later if you have any more specific questions. And I'll give some contact uh, ways that you can contact me and my website later if you have questions even after. So I'm here to be in service. And let's roll. OK, so I says starting has started screen sharing. Okay, <clears throat> well, I'll start talking and if it comes up, it comes up. Yeah, okay. can you see it on your end, Mark? I can't see it on my end. Can you see it on yours? Yeah, anyway, here we go. Great. Yeah, cool. Okay. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> relationships. I believe that all disease, dis-ease in the body, mind, and spirit has to do with relationships. Relationships to the stars, to the sky, to the land, to the earth, to your parents, to your um, family, to the plants, to the mountains, to the water. It's all about relationships. And when you have a dis-ease in relationships, according to Chinese medicine, that's where you get stuck energy and that's where you get vision problems. So an integrative medicine approach to vision is all about relationships. In Chinese medicine, we are looking for how does X relate to Y? What is the relationship between X and Y? In Western medicine, we're looking at how does X cause Y, okay? So it's an integrative approach. Let me just, for some reason it's not, I'm not able to move the slides. So you'll have to move the slides to the next slide. Um, again, relationships, touching, kinesthetic, smell, all your senses relate and all the senses relate to vision. In Chinese medicine, all the meridians go to the eyes and all the meridians go through the heart. That's why all vision conditions 
create a relationship of body, mind, and spirit. And we have some excellent speakers coming up later. Jacob, Peter Grunwald, Ray, so many, uh, Esther, so many people, and especially the things that you've talked about all week, uh, Greg Marsh, uh, all the things that you understand that, that the eyes are related to how we see the world, how we are in the world, how we perceive the world, world how we relate to the world. And especially like in myopia, Myopia, when is myopia being created? Myopia, a lot of times, six months to a year before myopia is being created, the person is in a place where they don't feel safe. And what happens when they don't feel safe? They blur out the world. So we have to create a place of safety, vision and relationships. Let's go to the next slide. if we can, <clears throat> that's right. What are vision educators doing? We are in the midst of an evolution, not a revolution. What we're looking to do is we're looking to be as vision educators to create education for people because our visual system is under, it's like running a marathon. When you, the digital world, how can we survive and thrive in this digital world? where we're looking to uh, use our eyes more than ever. There's an 80 to 90% incidence of myopia in Japan and China with children under the age of 14. If that's not an epidemic, nothing is. We are abusing our eyes. So we need to see how we can thrive and uh, survive in this digital world. And Nathan gave you some great ideas. All the vision education teachers are gonna give you great ideas to learn how to work your eyes. What do the dentists talk to you about? They talk to you about dental hygiene, brush your teeth, floss, use a water pick. We need to educate. And those of you who are here are here because you know that knowledge is power. We need to educate you on visual hygiene. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> That's right. The eyes are the windows to your soul. Shakespeare was right. In Chinese medicine, we call it the shen, the pilot light. What is going on inside of you? How does your inner vision affect your outer vision? And I was the person in the back of, of the class in optometry school saying, but, but, but why did they get a cataract in their right eye and not their left eye? And why did they get glaucoma in that eye and not the eye in that eye? Oh, we don't need to know why. We need to just know how to treat it. But that's not right. We need to not treat the, per not treat the eye condition we need to treat the person behind the eyes. So when we're looking at your eyes or the windows to the soul, what do we talk about in Chinese medicine? The right eye, in 95% of the people, the right eye is the yang eye, the father eye. The left eye is the mother eye, the yin eye. They both have different energetics. A little story that I'll tell is a woman came to see me she was about 50 years old and she had a cataract, which is a clouding of the lens in the eye in her right eye. And I said, 50 years old, you've got a cataract. That's much too young to have a cataract. So what did I say to her? I said, okay, here, here's some homeopathic eye drops that could be helpful. Here's some nutritional eye drops that could be helpful. This is a diet, but talk to me. What was going on in your life in the last six months or a year since I've seen you? What did she say? Oh, my father is dying, right eye. She had the cataract in her right eye and she was going through a divorce, male eye. So I said to her, I said, you know, take these remedies, do the nutrition, but you know, you need to get a support system, whether it's therapy or EFT, emotional freedom technique, work with your emotional body and get support in that uh, around your right eye. If you go to the therapist and you're getting therapy, wear a patch 
on your left eye so that you're doing the therapy and you're talking about this through your right eye, your portal to your soul. Embryologically, physiologically, neurologically, what is the eyes? Brain tissue. If you can change your mind, you can change your eyes and your vision. So the eyes are the windows to the soul. Next slide. Light has called forth one organ to become its like, and thus the eye is formed by the light, and for the light, so that the inner light may emerge to meet the outer light. And that's why it's talked about the inner vision and the outer vision. <clears throat> and we always talk about vision is that the light comes into the, uh, light comes in from outside, and that's what generates the photoreceptors and the cones and the rods, and that goes, to our visual cortex and see. But we know from research that we can actually have light come out of our eyes also. We can generate light from inside to out. And we have probably one of the world's experts on light and vision coming up with Ray Gottlieb and Jacob Lieberman in the next couple of days and today. So when you wanna talk about light, these are the people I learned about light from. Next slide. <clears throat> Albert Einstein, maybe I love him so much because he, he doesn't brush his hair. I had to push my hair back and it goes out of control. But he said, I have no special talents. I am only passionately curious. And that's what the bait system's about. It's about being curious, not letting the eyes get stuck, not letting them that stagnation. And if your eyes are stuck and you're doing, you know, we do scanning, we do shifting, we do swinging, we want to keep movement. Vision is movement. Arnold Gazelle, the originator of the Gazelle Institute of Child Development, said that vision is movement. So curiosity, this is what our vision is about. And again, when I talk about eyes being curious, I'm talking about the mind and our soul being curious. Next slide. <clears throat> inquiry, again, just like in curiosity, we want to have inquiry to how we see. Uh, the, la the last speaker, Olga, it was beautiful. And what Nathan said too, the quality of vision is totally different than the two-dimensional vision than when we put you behind the eye chart and we go, which is better, one or two looking through little holes in a semi-dark room. Of course, that's why I believe that over 80% of the prescriptions that eye doctors come up with are too strong because we're testing you under artificial circumstances. Oh, which is better, one or two? Oh God, what if I get it wrong? Uh, one. Two, three, four. Oh, it's about the same. And it's so we need to be relaxed. One story I had on relationships was <clears throat> I had a patient come in and I examined, he was a veterinarian. And I examined him at the end of the day and his prescription was two diopters, two diopters stronger than it was the year before. Now, if I put that prescription in front of his eyes, guess what? He saw clearly at that moment in time. What if he was having a bad day, which he did because he was doing a lot of surgeries, a lot of stress. So I said to him, tell me about your day. He said, well, by God, it was stressful. It's the end of the day. I didn't want to miss this appointment. I said, you know what? Come back next week, relax, take a yoga class, go for a walk. Let me see you first thing in the morning. He came back next week. Guess what? His prescription was totally the same as it was the year before. If I would have given him that prescription that he came in with at that end of the day, guess what would have happened? He would have got those glasses. He would have got them. He would have put them on. He says, I could see, but you know what? They don't feel right. And how many of you have gone and have gotten glasses and you go back and go, they don't feel right. And what? Has the eye doctor said to you, oh, you'll get used to it. 
that's right. And you'll get used to 50 pounds of rice on your back and then you'll be crooked. And that's why the things that Claudia was teaching you, the relationship with the body, the jaw and the eyes, you've got to keep your body relaxed and flexible to keep your eyes relaxed. Next slide, please. Optical differences in cases of multiple personality disorder. Again, in all the different personalities, many of the different personalities had different prescriptions according to studies. I believe that we're all multiple personality disorders. It's just a level of degree. When I get into the Chinese medicine, I've been doing, I've been an optometrist for 43 years and acupuncturist for 36 years. When we talk about Chinese medicine, which the slide will come up, we're talking about the five elements and we have all those elements inside of us. So we need to know that we have all these different parts of ourselves. So again, the eye is the mind. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Chinese medicine. This isn't a class in Chinese medicine, but when I went to acupuncture school uh, 36 years ago, it gave me a whole new medical way of looking at vision. And the, all, like I said, all the organ systems are um, <clears throat> go to the eyes. And vision, the visual cortex takes up more room in the brain than all the other organ systems together. So we have the wood element, the fire element, the earth element, the metal element, the water element. And usually constitutionally, we're one or two of those. So when I'm looking at somebody and they're more of a wood element type, they're gonna see the world differently. If they've got macular degeneration or um, <clears throat> glaucoma, it'll be different if they're more of a wood element or fire element. <clears throat> but let me give you a little, just an overall thing. Wood element in terms of eyes, many times related to glaucoma. Earth element related a lot of times to macular degeneration. Fire element, when there's imbalances, usually related to ADD or oculomotor dysfunction. Metal element, when it's out of balance, usually having to do with astigmatism. <clears throat> and water element, when it's out of balance, many times having to do with cataracts. So again, this is an overall view. We have all these things involved with us. But when I talk about integrative medicine, when people come to me with a vision condition, a vision problem, glaucoma, macular degeneration, cataracts, uh, diabetic retinopathy, what I tell them is put your team together. You might need a functional medicine doctor. You may need a naturopath. The microbiome, the gut, there's a, a relationship. They talk about the gut-brain connection. If there's a gut-brain connection, there's a gut-eye connection. And I have a whole, I give a whole class on the gut-eye uh, connection. So yes, the microbiome affects the eyes. So they need their functional medicine naturopathic doctor. Uh, a division educator. We have the best vision educators here. Oh my God, I learned so much from the first three speakers already. I'm so excited. So vision, put in vision educator to learn how to use your eyes in a easy, flexible way so that you don't abuse your eyes. Uh, you might integrate an acupuncturist. You might integrate a chiropractor, an osteopath. I work with chiropractors and osteopaths all the time. Uh, psychotherapists, somatic psychotherapists, um, Ralphers, there's so many different uh, flower essences, Bach flower remedies. These are all different ways that you need to integrate to help your vision possibly. So again, put your team together. Next slide. <clears throat> ah, Dr. David Hawkins, MD, PhD. <clears throat> he wrote a book called Power and Force. And when you are in your emotional system and how you are in the world, this is going to affect your energetic and affect your vision. Because when 
Do vision problems mostly come in? Remember I talked about myopia? When you're vibrating at a low frequency, fear, and when you're having fear, it means you don't feel safe. Glaucoma in Chinese medicine related to frustration and anger, 150. So when you can be in acceptance, reason, come from love, come from courage, these are places where your vibrational energy, we're talking about vibrational healing today. Robert Becker, energy healing. We need to know that in relationships, <clears throat> we are talking about how we are in the world. And vision, again, is our dynamic on how we relate. So, um, you know, I'm a, I'm, <laughs> I've read a lot of David Hawkins' book. I listen to it in the car. Uh, he does a lot of things with muscle testing and applied kinesiology. Uh, I've been trained in kinesiology and nutrition. So again, we want to up a vibration. And how can we do that? We can talk about that in the next slide. <clears throat> Oh, maybe it's the slide after that. But merely looking at the world around us is immensely different from seeing it. Again, how do we really see? Or are we just looking? Seeing is coming from our soul. Next slide. <clears throat> I put together some nice quotes that I like. Now, any of you who are going to email me or uh, things like that, you know that I always sign my emails the question is not what you look at, but what you see. So I'll be giving you all my personal email if you have any questions later, but that's how you'll see it. Henry David Thoreau. Next. <clears throat> Again, the eye chart. Oh my goodness. And I just love that our speakers have talked about that this is not vision. This is two-dimensional vision, three-dimensional vision, the depth of how you see the world. When you do Bates work, you don't not only change how you physically see, you see how you really see. You be able to see the world in more depth. And when you see the world in more depth on a sensory level, you can go deeper within yourself. Next slide. <clears throat> Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Albert Einstein gets two of my quotes in my presentation. And what do I mean by that? Think about it. You go to the eye doctor. <clears throat> my dad was an accountant, okay? And he said to me, hey, tell me what optometrists do. Well, we examine people's eyes. You know, we, uh, we give them glasses or contact lenses. We check for eye disease. And then we give them glasses and they see better. And we go, okay. He goes, and then they pay us and thank us. He goes, that's good. He tells, tell me more. Then they come back a year or two later. And guess what, dad? In 75% of the cases, especially with younger kids, it usually gets worse or people over 40 or 50. And guess what? I give them stronger glasses <laughs> and then uh, they pay us and thank us again. He goes, you're telling me you give them something and many times it gets worse. I go, yes. And they come back. I go, yes. And they pay you. I go, yes. He goes, as an accountant, that's not a bad profession. But I said, dad, I don't want their eyes to get worse. He goes, ah, you never listened. But think about it. How many of you out there, when you first got glasses, you come back a year later and it gets worse because you're still doing the same abuse in your eyes on a physical, emotional, or spiritual level that is causing the condition. And that's why vision educators and vision education is so important because if you don't, you're gonna keep getting the same results, stronger and stronger glasses. Next. So again, materials, I'm only going to give you some things. 
do you know that in some cases, and I'm very sensitive to electromagnetic frequencies, that when you have metal frames, what happens is it absorbs the, the EMFs, the, especially the 5G in more, so it can cause a switching and sometimes low level headaches around your eyes. Uh, Dr. John Diamond wrote a book called The Body Doesn't Lie. Actually, I've studied with him too. And he talked about the effect of metal frames on the brain and the eye. So sometimes if you can get plastic and sometimes people who are super sensitive can't even use plastic frames because there's metal inside or the metal screws, you can even get frames that are totally wood. Wood frames with wood screws are available out there. So people who are super sensitive to either metal frames or metal in general, especially around their eyes, because uh, it creates metal uh, more of an EMF sensitivity, can get um, <clears throat> uh, all wood frames. So I just wanted to give you that information out there because um, I get a lot, you know, definitely patients who need that. Next slide. <clears throat> and, oh, I was so happy when uh, Olga talked about go outside. That's right. We are in a place that nature, we have, you know, you, we've heard about ADD. We're talking about NDD, nature deficit disorder. Next slide. <clears throat> Again, relationships to our environment. Go outside, feel the trees, feel the grass, feel the earth. Uh, Dr. Uh, Stephen Sinatra, who's a cardi uh, cardiologist, talked about earthing. Earthing, where you feel the earth, has been shown to be helpful with ocular blood flow in the eye and diabetic retinopathy. They did before and after retinal photos. So feel the earth. Many times I'm telling patients, stand in dirt, get outside, feel the earth, go to the beach. Next. Trying to keep in terms of time. <clears throat> Again, uh, we, somebody, uh, Olga talked about this. The average child just spent over four hours a week outside. That's less than half what their parents when they were little. Next slide. <clears throat> but many of, many of this information you've already had. Again, but an average American, 18 or 11 hours per day, oh my God. If that's not abusing our eyes, nothing is. Next. Again, relationship to how <clears throat> Benjamin Franklin, Hmm, didn't he invent the bifocals too? An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Next slide. So I do nutrition. Um, a slide of my book will be coming up. It's an 800 page book on nutrition and eyes. So nutrition, the relationship to our food, when we eat it, how we eat it, what time of day we eat it. Do we do intermittent fasting? Uh, the sugar relationships. Fried foods, glycation, which is the protein sticking together, which creates cataracts, are nutritional factors very, very important in our vision. And what is the Chinese medicine philosophy? To fight a disease after it has occurred is like trying to dig a well when one is thirsty or forging a weapon once a war has begun. So we need to, again, work with our nutrition, our exercise, both physical and eye exercises before the problems. Get good visual hygiene. Next. <clears throat> okay, nutrition in your eyes. Next. <laughs> Tomatoes, high in lycopene, good for the vision. <clears throat> the most important uh, nutritional foods for the eyes are the berries, the dark berries, which have like the blueberries, the bilberries. Uh, those help with the integrity of the blood vessel walls. Also the carotenoids like lutein, zeaxanthin, the dark leafy vegetables. Uh, kale has the highest degree of lutein, collard greens, spinach, 
Um, avocado is really good. So again, this isn't a class on nutrition, uh, but I have lots of information on my website, over 300 pages and a 800 page book on that too, if you wanna learn more. Next. <clears throat> Hydration, water, our bodies are very high, more 70, 80% of water. Our eyes are water, the aqueous humor, the vitreous humor. So we need to hydrate. And why is hydration important? So again, the amount of water we drink is about half our body weight. And then there's structured water, which is something that I've, I've been doing myself. Make sure it's clean water. But you know, going back to the vibrational relationship, remember Dr. Amodo talked about the fact that you can change the actual structure of water based on if you're sending it like love or permission or uh, gratitude. You'll actually see Dr. Amodo wrote a whole book on water and has pictures of um, how the structure changes. Also, the other thing that changes water structure is sound energy. So using tuning forks, I've been able to use different, uh, John Lennon's uh, Imagine is in a certain uh, frequency that helps with vision conditions. So if you look into sound therapy, if you look into tuning forks, again, this is another part of a possible tool we can use to help vision conditions. Next, <clears throat> so many relationships with the vision. Ah, vision is the art of seeing what is invisible to others. So one of the first books I wrote, which you'll see some copies of them, is the Magic Eye Books. The Magic Eye Book is where you relax your eyes and all of a sudden a picture pops out. So it's the invisibility, being able to see beyond. Remember seeing, I think what Bates did was he, it, it's like an art. What vision educators are doing, it's like artistic. They're really getting into your soul so you can really see what's invisible. To be able to see the things that you don't even know, that you don't even know that you're not seeing. This is powerful. Vision is powerful. Next. <clears throat> Again, this was a uh, sculpture. My total conscious search in life has been for a new seeing. That's what the Bates method do. A new image, a new insight from our eyesight. This search not only includes the object, but the in-between places. And that's why the sculpture is so important. And it's also like on general health, it's the space between the cells that's important. It's the space between the notes in music that's important. It's the pauses that are important. It's to be able to not react to things, but to re, uh, reflect on things, to respond, not to react. React has one speed and response and reflective happens at another speed. Next. Remember, we do not see things as they are. We see things as we are, rabbinical Talmud study. So again, the, you know, we influence what we see. You know, it's almost like uh, eyewitnesses. How can so many people see the same thing, but see it differently? Next. Now, this is from um, Alex Gray, who actually I know personally, that the eye is a symbol of consciousness and awareness, and especially for a work of art. He, has, he is so into eyeballs. You go to his place uh, near where I am in the Chapel of Sacral Mirrors, and you'll see these amazing art things with eyeballs all around like the Egyptians, because do you know that you just don't see from your eyes, you see from your whole body. 20% of the visual fibers do not go from the optic nerve to the visual cortex, but they go to the whole body. You can put acupuncture points in different points in the body and it'll light up the visual cortex. 
So we are seeing from our whole body soul. We have eyes all over our body. So we look into each other's eyes to see if someone is paying attention to us and if they see us. So for, for us, it is a way that we check out if someone is aware or not. So the eyes is what we use to guard someone's awareness. And therefore, if you make infinite eyes, you're talking about a symbol of infinite awareness. To see with the divine eye is to see beyond your normal binocular vision. It's to open eyes in all dimensions. And if you're able to open your eyes, you could be open to everything everywhere. Be in a total place of openness and receiving. And that is the idea to suggest that it's possible for us to perceive infinity through the lens of our imagination. Oh my God, Alex has got it going on. Next. Uh, this is my latest book, Your Guide to Healthy Natural Eye Care Vision and Healing. It's over 800 pages, uh, it has 2,000 peer review references, goes through about 30 different diseases, talks about Chinese medicine, nutrition, herbs, uh, essential oils. Um, I had about 10 different eye doctors help me with it. Dr. Sam Byrne helped me. I've had, I have a whole thing on ER, emergency things. It's very, very comprehensive. Uh, you can also get it on Kindle for just ten dollars because it's a very heavy book. But it's um, and we also had to divide it into separate books because uh, on just glaucoma or macular degeneration we have that on our website. Next <clears throat> slide. These are some of my other books. Those are my two 3D books, Magic Eye, How to See 3D and Improve Your Vision, Magic Eye. The Greater Vision book, that goes into the physical, emotional, and spiritual aspects of vision. And uh, Jacob, who you'll be hearing from later, wrote the um, forward to it. So I'm so glad to be on a panel later with Jacob and being in a, a conference with Ray. It's very exciting to connect with them again. Uh, Glenn Swartout, who's in Hawaii, brilliant, brilliant optometrist. Um, and we went to school together. Um, I did my first natural eye care book with. But these are some of the other books that are out there that I've done. Next slide. <clears throat> this is my website, naturaleyecare.com. We have a free newsletter. Uh, free eye exercise handouts, um, blogs. Uh, that number has changed now. I think you can still call that number. Uh, Michael Edson, who's the president of Natural Eye Care, runs the website, does free uh, uh, nutritional consultations on our protocols. Uh, the new number is 845-475-4158. Uh, we've been doing it for 20 years, and we get probably about maybe 800,000 million visits a year. So people want natural eye care. Next. <clears throat> oh, that's me. That's my personal email, drgrossman2020 at gmail.com. If you have any questions, um, you know, try to email me if you want. I'll try to get to it and answer it. Um, I get a lot of emails every day, but I usually answer them as, as good as possible. Um, I'm here to be in service. I don't know what our time is, but if there's any more time left, I'm open to questions and I'll be open to any questions after the conference is over and during the panel. So thank you so much for your attention. And um, if Nathan wants to read some of the chat questions, I'll be happy to answer as many as I can in this time period. Oh, look at that. I got 15 minutes for, or 10 minutes for questions. Thank you yeah. again for your attention. Thank you, Mark. That was awesome overview and some awesome insights and tips in there. Uh, yeah, I'll look through the chat here. Um, Holly just typed in, don't forget to tell us how to up our vibrational level and why we need to do this. Ah. <clears throat> uh, I think the first step to opting your vibration, vibrational level is to pay yourself first. And I'm not telling you to do what I do, but every morning when I get up, 
I, I do a little body work using a still point inducer on the back of my uh, head below the visual cortex, right here, the occipital cortex. In Chinese medicine, uh, that's gallbladder 20 and bladder 10 areas, increases the cerebral spinal fluid. And then I meditate. I do meditation uh, anywhere from a minimum, if I only have time of eight minutes, but usually try to do 16 to 20 minutes. I use a uh, sometimes a device called heart math. So I get into my heart energy. So the first is to put myself in a very receptive state. So I meditate every morning. Um, I do a little exercise. And, and as we've been talking about, go outside, vibrate with the earth. I live in the woods up in New Paltz, go to the ocean, go to the woods, vibrate with the, with the nature. So that's, I think that's the easiest way to up your vibrational energy. And also the way you started your presentation today was with gratitude. So I just want to oh, mention yeah. that I think gratitude, expressing thanks and gratitude is another very powerful way. Totally. Thank you, Nathan, for reminding me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Totally come from a place of gratitude. Yeah. Attitude of gratitude. Yes. Uh, so Diara asks, what do you think of iBright? <clears throat> iBright's an herb. I use it in some of my uh, herbal formulas. I've used it. Uh, I've done a lot of Dr. Christopher's work in herbs. Uh, it's, I found it pretty good for external eye conditions using it as a compress. I, you know, it's okay in terms of the internal eye conditions, such as glaucoma and cataracts, but I haven't had that much success with that, just using that uh, as one of the herbs, and I haven't seen studies on that, but using it for the overall uh, outside of the eyes, conjunctivitis, blepharitis, uh, I've used Eyebright as part of a combination of herbs, yes. Cool, and um, you did just mention its potential connection with cataract. Um, somebody asked, Severe cataract in right eye can barely see any treatments besides surgery. Thanks. Yeah, there's so many. I mean, first of all, there's like six different kinds of cataracts. You know, when you're looking at a cataract, you're looking at is it in the middle of the lens, either nuclear or cortical, anterior uh, cataract, posterior subcapsular. We again, we want to look to why the person has the cataract. There are certain, we have a whole cataract protocol on our website, naturaleyecare.com. Uh, but many times I do recommend surgery and they have to do surgery. And sometimes there's things you can do before and after surgery to make sure that the surgery goes well. So a lot of times I'll do consultations, uh, Zoom or phone consultations on what you should do before surgery or after. But many times if you're going to do natural ways of trying to get rid of cataracts, you, it'll, it'll either work or not work within one to three months. There's also things that have been shown to reduce cataracts in dogs called lanosterols, and they're working on stem cells to reduce cataracts. So there's a lot of things out there to try to reduce cataracts naturally. I'm not against surgery uh, if needed. So, um, but there's a certain point where, you know, it, it, sometimes it's better off to do surgery. You don't want to wait that long. Again, it's an integrative model of vision. Okay, yeah, next thank please. You. Yeah, a couple of questions about floaters. Um, just one in general, is there anything you know we can do to eliminate or minimize them? And somebody also said, recently experienced increased floaters and the start of flashes, no retinal tear yet. Would you have any specific acupuncture supplements? Um, or anything to recommend to prevent retinal tear? Yeah, well, first of all, <clears throat> and anytime you get a floaters or flashes of light, you do have to see your eye doctor to make sure that it's not a retinal detachment. A retinal detachment will need laser, but many, 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 many times it's due to a posterior vitreous detachment, which is just that the morphology of the vitreous is starting to pull itself off the retina and you get those flashes. Very, very common in people over 60. The vitreous humor is made of hyaluronic acid. So I tell people to take 100 to 200 milligrams of hyaluronic acid, which not only is good for the vitreous, 
but also good for your joints because it's also, it's an anti-inflammatory. Also, there's a homeopathic floater pellets uh, that can be used. They have silica in it. We have a whole protocol for uh, vitreous floaters. Uh, in Chinese medicine, again, it's due to stuck energy, usually in the liver meridian. So we try a herbal formula to unblock liver stagnation. Floaters are tough and more common in nearsighted people than farsighted people. Um, so, you know, I do have a protocol. It's on the website, naturaleyecare.com. Michael Edson can go over it with you. There are things, things to try and they'll either work or they won't work in the first month of trying them. Uh, I'm also working with a biophysicist to try to work with sound energy uh, and uh, frequencies to help break up floaters because floaters also, each floater has a charge to it, a positive and negative charge. And basically they're also made of proteins, the little pieces of proteins in the vitreous. So if you have any problems digesting proteins, I'll also tell them to take like uh, digestive enzymes uh, like protease to reduce to help break down proteins. So that's, sorry, I'm talking so fast, but with limited time. Um, so that's like an overview of the vitreous floater protocol, but you can get more on the website or in the book. Thank you. Well, wow, that's really cool. I love the whole idea of using sound therapy and yeah, I, I think that's- Well, that's one more thing on floaters, because yeah. they have a charge to it, sometimes, using a magnet, about 5,000 gauss magnet uh, and putting a North Pole can help pull the floaters out of the line of sight. It may work, it may not work, but it's worth trying. That's fascinating, wow. Somebody also mentioned, I had a period of a lot of floaters and occasional flashers, but then it went away. Could this be because of reduction of stress and yoga practice? Yes, that's where the Bates method and yoga comes in perfectly. Love it. Uh, I also have a website, advancedvisionsupport.com, uh, that I did with my friend, uh, www.advancedvisionsupport.com, who's a yoga teacher for 40 years. And we put together a combination of the yoga eye exercises along with the vision exercises that can be downloaded. But doing the Bates method, relaxation, stress. I remember I was going through a stressful time and all of a sudden I said, Oh, look at that. I got a floater. Oh, that's what it feels like. So stress and why does stress affect floaters? Liver stagnation. So stress affects the liver. So again, relaxation uh, can definitely help with floaters. The Bates method, oh, definitely part of the team when you're having floaters. But first, rule out any medical issues. Next question, if there's any. Uh, Trisha just kind of chimed in and said, you know, when you address the emotional component of the eye issues, then the physical part will heal easier. <clears throat> yes. You, a lot of what you have to do, yes. I mean, if you're working on the emotional part, and we have some great vision educators who also integrate EFT, uh, in it. Uh, I know two of them personally, uh, Greg Marsh and Nancy Neff. There might be others who do EFT too, uh, emotional freedom technique. But again, uh, when somebody has a condition, it might, there might be 80% emotional and 10% physical. It might be that they're in on the screens 20 hours a day and they've just bleached their photoreceptors by the blue light frequencies. So Again, you need to treat the person behind the eyes and say, well, what's been going on for the last three to six months behind that? I mean, Roberto, when I used to assist him and Jacob, and you know, they were so, they gave me so much courage to really ask people, what's going on behind your eyes? What has been happening in your life that made the change in your visual system? So yes, let's not, Let's pay attention to that. But just because you've taken care of the emotional, it'll make it easier for the visual system to get better, but it may, it may not. Going back to that person with the cataract, I forgot, I don't even know if I said, 
he, she came back a year later and the cataract was gone in her right eye. Why? Because her dad had died, she grieved it, and her divorce was final. So who knows? To me, that was a psycho-emotional cataract. Mm, yeah. And yeah, maybe last maybe. one, like, uh, like you mentioned, like with the floaters, but I think this one's a little bit more about cataracts. If an 85-year-old with, uh, or an 85-year-old relative with cataracts hopes to reverse um, with pycnogenol and grapeseed extract, how long to try before surgery? Well, pycnogenol and grapeseed extract aren't my first two choices to help cataracts. Again, it depends on the level of cataracts it is. My oldest patient who had been able to not have to have cataract surgery was 96. So I'd have to see the level of the cataract, what layer it's in, uh, and I would more, more use different kind of eye drops like um, Oculomed, which has glutathione and N-acetylcarnosine, which helps break up the glycation. Can't see a homeopathic eye drop uh, with scenario in it, which is, is actually in the PDR of ophthalmology, showing that it helps in 22.5% of the cases. Um, so, and I'm not saying that I would just say, don't even waste your time and money with the eye drops like I did twice this week and said, just go get cataract surgery. So I can't promise that. Uh, also, uh, besides the, the fact that I, that I gave um, my website, I'm gonna be giving my first uh, in-person class in two years at Kripala Yoga Center in February uh, this year that I'm gonna be doing a um, in-person weekend if anybody wanted to come. So any more questions? Uh, if that was the last, I'll be on the panel and you can always email me another time. Um, so if there's other, do we have time for any more questions or was that it, that's it? Yeah, that's right? it for now. We're gonna take our short break and then yeah, we'll have some more time at the end. So thank you so much, Mark, this was awesome. And thank you so much for all your attention, whoever you are out there, because I don't know who's out there now. So thank you for listening and uh, hopefully I'll see you in a few hours again. Awesome, thank you.